Hello everyone, this is Zero Raptor coming at you with the test final revelation. This is the final game in the test trilogy and so far I haven't seen anyone play this game so I'm going this totally blind and hopefully just like the second game uh, I'm not gonna have any issues with it freezing up on me because the second game like I recorded it just fine it was the first game that kept freezing on me for some reason so yep here's the hoping this will be just as good here we go yeah for experiencing the test final revelation it's highly recommended that you've played its prequels the test and the test hypothesis rising first before venturing into this experience you will stand to gain a lot more from the experience if you play the first two titles, and this examination will also make a bit more sense as it carries on from where the last examinations left off. I would like to urge you to go play the test, followed by a test hypothesis rising now before venturing forward. Da 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 da, yeah. I've played, I've already played the test in test two. Well then, let us continue. Please make sure you answer each question with utmost honesty, and you, that you take your time to answer the questions presented. Even answering one question improperly may drastically change your outcome. You cannot go back to answer questions you misanswered, so be sure to take your time. This is of utmost importance. Alright, the stakes are high here. When the sun comes crashing down and the heroes fade away, when darkness is all around and there is no light of day, I will come back for you so that you will never feel alone. My spirit will push through. Your heart will forever be my home. And when the world spirals into abyss, I will be standing there. Your embrace so long I've missed. My soul, my love, I bear. And when every nerve has been left deadened and every ghost has left this shell, I will bring you back to your heaven as you've rescued me from my hell. It is starting off pretty dramatic. It's in the middle now. No matter what happens, I will always love you. Whoa, what's going on here? Wait, is that supposed to be a hat? I thought that was a mask. Because this is the character from the first game, right? Choice, do you promise? With every ounce of my heart and each droplet of my soul, I swear to you, we are going to find a way out of here. What? Okay, interesting. The testing room. Oh, here, back to the side again. Oh, whoa. Destiny. Hmm, I wasn't expecting you so soon. Wait, I don't get it. They remastered the first test. How come that one didn't have... A dialogue image like the second game in this game because like it's like the main graphic is off to the side here so in the first test like I don't know why they remastered it but they didn't add like a dialogue image or did they and I just never my game just never loaded it that's weird because it would make sense if they were remastered if they remastered the first game then it should have the character should have its own dialogue image then I would be so surprised that oh that's a hat and not a mask anyways um let's see what this character has to say though i knew that one day we would meet in this room it seems to be the same room for all three games i don't know if are these guys like what's it it's like the 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 ghosts from like christmas carol the ghost of like present past and future is that what this is supposed to be alluding to? Huh. Okay, then I guess it makes sense for all three games to be taking place in the same room in that regard. So this means like this is probably like my room and the ghosts are having me reflect on my life before I 
go to the great beyond? Or am I overthinking this? Because it feels like the parallels between this and Christmas Carol... I don't know, it seems too coincidental. You see closely, I've been watching you. It seems all of you guys have been watching me. Studying every breath and every move. Okay, that's that's getting kind of creepy now. A few of my former colleagues you may have met. And a slew of questions you're answering without regret. Oh, the limericks. I may be similar, but unlike them still. I'll make you swallow the truth like a bitter pill. I will peel the emotion from your soul. And make you eat your feelings whole. Joke's on you, I have no feelings. Or soul. The questions I ask may be hard to answer. But I will cut the truth from you like a cancer. Well, Alright. Both of us know why you're here. Do we? I feel like you're the only one who knows. To open up and cast out fear. To be as honest as you can. To take angel's wings or devil's hand. And in the end we will both we both will know how to escape your undertow. Time is on your side, but mistakes are not. Misanswered questions lead to misery rot. Take time to think before you decide. Dig deep for the answers that live inside. Deep dive, Kingdom Hearts. You may not go back, you may not return. Once a decision is made, into your soul tis burned. But before we continue, just know this. Your dishonesty will be very remiss. If your answers lack the guidance of truth, then your final destination will be rather uncouth. So with that being said, I, heed, I need your heart's honesty. You can run from yourself, but you can't run from me. I mean, destiny would have worked too, but okay. You do you. Now, let the examination begin. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to connect the previous two games. But yeah, I am starting to get the feeling this is like a very Christmas Carol kind of experience. Do you ever feel like you just aren't good enough? Yeah, that's pretty much my whole life in a nutshell. Do you ever feel like you put more effort into friends or relationships than others put back into you? That is an interesting question, because the way I contribute into a relationship, like, I do it because I want to, but I don't really, like, mind if my friends or other people I have relationships with, like, reciprocate that. Most of the time, I don't. But there are times when, like, like, the only times I ever feel annoyed by it is, like, when like, I'm contributing to the relationship, and then the other person is like, Oh, you haven't done anything for me. And then that gets me, like, really annoyed. Because, like, I've been putting effort into this relationship. You haven't done anything. And then you're criticizing me for not doing enough when you haven't done anything. Like, that really bugs me. So, yeah, I don't really feel this on, like, a normal basis. But it only really triggers, like, when I deal with that kind of... Uh, response. So, in general, no. It's really only occasionally that I feel that way. You ever feel like your life is going nowhere? I used to, but now I feel I have more of a direction. Like, I'm really focused on my hobbies and my projects now, so not anymore. No. Do you ever feel like you're trapped in limbo? Do I ever feel? Yes, I have. Especially in my in my projects, my hobbies, sometimes like I'll be focused on working it, on working on it, and then like you know, writer's block, artist block, that kind of deal. So yeah. Do you ever feel overwhelmed by some by seemingly trivial tasks? When I was younger, but now I'm older, I have more experience. So yes, if I ever felt that, yes, I did, but not currently. Are you sometimes afraid of what your future may hold? No. I'm pretty content with the path I've chosen. 
Do you believe that your friends always treat you the way you deserve to be treated? If you feel you deserve to be treated a certain way, maybe you don't deserve to be treated that way, so... I don't know, it feels like if I put no, then it's like... Oh, I feel resentful? But I don't feel resentful, it's like my friends treat me how they do... Because that's how they want to treat me, and it's like... I don't mind that? Everyone perceives me in their own way, and it's like, okay, that's like their perception of me. But it's like, it's not something that I feel I deserve to be treated, it's just... That's just how it is. If it was like, if I believe that my friends always treat me the way they, they... They think I deserve to be treated, then yes. But this one is like really, from my perspective, I don't... Because I don't feel like I deserve to be treated any other way, but it's like, if I put no, then it feels... I get the sense that I feel like, resentful. I'll just put no. <laughs> Are you afraid of being the last person alive in your social circle? No. I mean, I said before, and I'll say it again, don't mind dying alone. Are you afraid of the existence of an afterlife and what that might mean for you? No? I mean, if there's an afterlife, it's like, okay, round two. <laughs> Do you feel as though you're wanted in life? I mean, yeah, my friends and co-workers like me. Do you ever feel like you just don't belong? Did I ever? Yes, I have felt that way again in the past not currently do you ever feel like a burden yeah again in the past have you ever felt left out oh yeah but now i feel like i'm comfortable in my own skin have you ever felt like a failure yes have you ever felt like you just weren't attractive enough no i am accepting of my full ugliness have you ever worked yourself sick my coworkers do say that I work too hard, but I haven't. I'm not so much of a workaholic that I work myself to like illness, you know. I mean, closest thing is me contracting COVID, but that's just like you know me being in contact with like customers that carry it with them. So no, I haven't worked myself sick. Do you ever have racing thoughts at night that make it difficult for you to get to sleep? Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes. Thinking about all like the ideas I have and what projects I want to work on, but like I can't continue. It's like, yeah. Are you afraid to ask for help? No. If I need help, I need help. Do you feel like people often criticize you? I mean, people criticize me, but it's not like all the time. Like It's like it works in balancing. Sometimes I get criticized, sometimes I get praised, criticized, praised. It's like, it's like a... Like, but they're both in moderation, so I don't think being criticized is, like, more frequent. So, no. Do you ever feel judged by your friends and family? Uh, family definitely, yes. Do you ever wonder what your purpose is in life? Nope. Everyone has their own goals. Do you need a purpose to be born? <laughs> no. You're just here. And you just need to choose where you, which direction you want to go in your life. If you could turn back time for any reason, would you? No. I am who I am because of my history. Would you say that you have many regrets in life? I mean, there are times that I regret not taking better care of my toys because they'd be worth a lot more now. So... Not a lot. They're trivial regrets. They're not major regrets. Does meeting new people for the first time make you uncomfortable? No. I meet new people all the time. Does looking out your window at night make you feel uneasy? Uh, no, because there's a bunch of cats outside my house for some reason. Do you sometimes double check that your doors are locked even though you're certain that you've already locked them? No. You ever feel like life is moving too slow? No, it's moving too fast. Last I checked, I was in my 20s, now I'm in my 30s. <laughs> Do you ever feel like life is moving too fast? Yes. Do you feel uncomfortable when you're home alone? No. Would you ever- would you consider yourself to be a thoughtful person? If you're saying, my head is full of thoughts that are constantly brainstorming stuff, then sure, yeah. Would you consider yourself to be superficial? I mean, I buy a lot of stuff, but I feel like, like model kits and stuff. I mean, on the surface, I guess it's kind of superficial because it's something like I build and then I put it on display for me to like admire. But 
when it comes to clothing, like whatever's comfortable, it's fine. I don't, I'm not really into like high fashion and stuff. So, no, not that superficial. Do you ever judge others by the way they look or dress? No. Would you consider yourself to be high maintenance? No. I'm pretty content. Have you ever been bullied by someone you cared about? I think my first friend ever was someone. Yeah, I, I did care about her. Like I said in a previous video, like I had a friend who was a bully and I was like, you know, the follower. So in that regard, yes. But that wasn't really a healthy relationship. Have you ever been bullied to someone you care about? I mean, as a minion, probably. I don't remember anything off the top of my head, but I probably have. I don't mean to, but it just happened. Do you try to keep a low profile to avoid tension from others while in a crowded area? Yeah. Do you actually try to avoid busy places? Yes, because it's such a pain to travel through. Not because... I it's not because I don't like socializing, but it's just like... Like freeways and theme parks and like... Strip malls. It's just... There's so many people and it's just a pain to have to walk through them to get to where you want to go. Would you sometimes rather be alone than surrounded by people you care about? If I'm surrounded by people I care about, then yeah, I want to be with them. So... No. Does making phone calls make you feel uncomfortable? Used to, now I'm kind of like okay with it. Are you sometimes afraid to confront people even when they do something that bothers you? Yeah, because I don't like... Because I can't be sure of how a person will react because everyone's going to react to the same to the exact same situation in a different way. So is that kind of unpredictability? It's like I don't want to accidentally step on someone's toes and they're just going to accuse me of stuff that I didn't intend. So yeah, confrontation is still a problem with me. Do you feel uncomfortable when committing to definitive plans for the future? No. I mean, if I decide on something, that's like, that's where I'm going. <laughs> Do you ever feel like no matter how hard you try, you just can't seem to stay motivated? Yeah. My creative endeavors. Do you ever feel that you're fi- Do you ever fear that you're failing those who care about you most? No. I think I'm fine. Does driving a vehicle give you anxiety? Nope. Transformers fan here. Vehicles are the name of the game. Are you afraid of, ex are you afraid of exploring new places by yourself? Nope. I actually prefer that because when I'm with someone else, I feel pressured into like making the right decisions. Even though I've never been to a certain place. So yeah, I like I like exploring by myself mostly because if I make a mistake, then only I would know about it compared to someone else watching me make a mistake firsthand and like, you know, judging me for it. Usually that'd be a friend. Have you ever carried an object around with you that made you feel more comfortable? Yeah, I used to have it's like my own kind of security blanket object, but I don't I don't have it anymore, but I used to. If I told you that I could guess your name correctly right now, would you believe me? No. You're not. Hmm. Well, based on the answers you've provided for me so far, if I were to take a guess, I would say your name starts with the letter M, doesn't it? <laughs> no. That makes sense. Let's be real here. There's literally no way I'd be able to guess your name just by your answers. That would be ridiculous. Besides, all of you humans look alike to me anyhow. <laughs> Does being around animals bring you a sense of peace? Yeah. Because you can always expect animals to be animals. Do you sometimes believe your loved ones are lying to you when they are saying they care? That is a difficult question because very frequently throughout my life I've had people tell me they care and they turn around and do something that's like a complete dick move. So yes, I get that. Do you ever feel like you pushed your loved ones away? No, I mean I always try to be pretty open. Hmm. I'm going to have to stop you here. Whoa, what's going on? The truth that pours forth is incredibly clear. I hope that you're being honest for your own health. Wait, what? You can try to lie, but you'll be cheating yourself. 
I'd like to move on to the next phase of the test. A series of pictures to give your brain a rest. I don't like where this is going. You're going to tell me what emotional response they bring out, which will show me what your mind is pondering about. So feast your eyes upon the art and let me into that precious heart. For starters, what emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Organized chaos? Yeah, organized chaos. What word do you feel describes this picture best? Um, it is kind of pretty. Yeah. What do you think this picture is called? Celestial st Oh, actually, yeah, it is kind of a spiral. So yeah, celestial stare. Very interesting. Moving on. What emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Wispiness? I mean, there's not a lot of sharp edges. It's like a airy kind of deal. It looks kind of cobwebby, so I guess depression? What word do you feel describes the picture best? It is kind of a uh, toxic looking. What do you think this picture is called? I guess a corruption wave? I see. Next we have this one. What emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? I don't know. I'm not... It's kind of... I guess numbness? What word do you feel describes the picture the best? It doesn't look mirrored. Or I guess twin? What do you think this picture is called? I see you. Yeah. Noted. Take a look at this one. What emotion do you feel is most present? I guess relaxation. It's kind of relaxing colors. Got like greens, blues. What word do you feel describes it? Yeah, I would say it's like a gateway. What do you think this picture is called? Dimension door? That's peculiar. Why? How about this one? Ooh. The emotion you feel is most present. Oh yeah, I definitely get some anger here. It's like... Yeah, it's... It doesn't look very lightning, but it looks kind of like flamey. I would say blazing. What do you think this picture is called? It looks kind of like a hole, so I'll say nest of darkness. I'll make a note of that. And this here... What emotion do you feel is most present? It's kind of joyous. It's got a lot of nice bright colors. Nah, I don't see it. Prismatic. It's very prismism. Uh... Shining light. Let's see. Now this one. Ooh. It feels like a planet is getting created. I mean, what's... Which one of these is close to the idea of wonder? Curiosity. It's joy. <laughs> what word do you feel describes pictures as? Planetary. It does feel kind of planetary. What do you think this picture is called? Growth seed? Hmm. How about this? Whoa. Oh yeah, that's a very that's a very angry picture. Brimstone. Yeah, it, it doesn't really give me the feel of volcanic. Yeah, I guess fury. Arcing blaze no, it's a lot of sharp edges. Yeah, I would say inferno gate. It's interesting that you say that. Why? What's up with this destiny? Whoa. Okay, this one's, um... Yeah, I guess it's kind of depressing. Analyzing. Yeah. I would make note of that. Now this one. Ooh. I don't know, for some reason I'm kind of... Kind of neutral to this. I mean, it does kind of give 
feeling of a birth? Because if it was a womb, there wouldn't be a light, I feel. Birthplace of dreams? I don't get the heart scene. I don't get the feeling of going down. It is very ultraviolet. Yeah. Interesting. Take a look at this. Whoa. I feel Beat Saber. <laughs> yeah, I get some joy out of this. Beat Saber. Puzzle, yeah. Deciphering Picasso face. It's somewhat cubic, I would say. Crystal verse? Oh no, no me no metaverses, please. Uh planar zone? Huh. We're almost done. What emotion do you feel is present? Oh. This one's kinda nice. I like that. Relaxation. Arc slime vapor melting drool viscous. Yeah, feels kinda watery. A cradle. It's like a cradling of life. Let's see here. Emotion feels most present. Ooh. I mean, it's not chaotic. There's like a... Just like a point of interest. Laser. Yeah, it's very laser-like. Sonic boom. Silver blade! Yeah, kind of looks sword-like. Alright then. Just a few more. What emotion do you feel is most present? Uh, this one's kind of relaxing too. Cosmic. Pearl. Yeah, I would go to cosmic. Spiral. Planar core. Marble of time. Yeah, it doesn't really have an idea of a spiral to me. Yeah, a marble of time. That's surprising. Almost finished. I feel this is like the ink block test, but it's like prettier. <laughs> what emotion do you feel? I kind of feel numb at this. It's, uh, I guess it's kind of nebulous. Light breaking. Yeah, it's like light breaking up. Very good. Last one. Uh, I think that's kind of nice. Relax. Mm, choir. It does feel kind of solitary. Notes of harmony. I think that about wraps it up. Your answers have been documented well. Deep into your deep into your subconscious they dwell, but I am not finished with you just yet. There are still some truths that have yet to be met. As a matter of fact, this is only the start. We will have a great deal of fun before we part. We are you. So let me challenge you on another level still. I will pick your brain until I get my fill. This next set of questions will test your conscience more. And again, your honesty, I do implore. Let us begin. One year, you're running a little low on funds to purchase presents around the holidays, so you decide to spend $1 and get everyone in your family a lottery ticket. You give each of them their own lottery ticket and wish them, wish them the best of luck. The drawing is held and one of your family members hits the jackpot, but it's someone who you don't really get along with and just bought a present for out of moral obligation. They plan to keep the money all for themselves as they feel like it was their ticket. How does this make you feel? Yeah, indifferent. That's the way life goes sometimes. I mean, you can't... People will be who they are. You can't change that. <laughs> and what would you wish to do in this situation? Or let them be happy with their winnings. If the roles were reversed and you were given a winning lottery ticket, would you share the money with your least favorite family member who bought you the ticket in the first place? No.
Because, like, if I want it, I want it. Whatever I choose to do with it, they need to respect that. I mean, they can't expect me to, like, give them something in return when they haven't done much for me. At least that's the way I see it. Now, you're walking through a forest and you come across a black suitcase. Inside the case, there rests one million dollars. <laughs> like, that's worth anything these days. Alongside the money, there lies a bloodstained note with only one word written on it. The note simply says, don't. How does this make you feel? Scared, there's blood in there! Anxious, what if someone comes with the money? I definitely wouldn't be excited. I mean, yeah, I feel kind of indifferent. What would you wish to do with the situation? Call the cops? If the note wasn't covered in blood, would it change your decision at all? No. I mean, I don't know where the money came from. I don't know its history, and I don't want to be part of that history, so... Yeah, give it, let the cops take care of it. Like I said, a million dollars isn't worth much these days, so... What am I gonna do with it? The devil appears in your room at night while you're alone and just about to fall asleep, and tells you that he's a special one-time offer for you. Wow, limited time promotion! In exchange for your soul and eternal damnation, he will let you choose from one of three glorious bargains. He has not told you what those bargains are yet. How does that make you feel? Intrigued. My curiosity would really get the best of me in this situation. The devil then goes on to assure you that whether or not you believe him to truly be the devil, he surely is, and to prove his point, he demonstrates magnificent magical prowess and drags you to hell for a split second before transporting you back to your bedroom. In that second, you could feel a lifetime of pain and suffering in the most unimaginable ways possible. He then goes on to tell you of his offers in exchange for your soul to see if you can strike a bargain. Which of these would you choose in exchange for your soul, if any? You can bring one person back from the dead. Yeah, but they could end up being a zombie and that's not all good. Wealth and power in the world, yeah, and then I'll be living in fear for the rest of my life because someone's going to want to kill me for all that wealth and power. I wouldn't sell my soul to the devil. I mean, if he strikes me a good deal, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. You will never age but can still die from physical injury. That I would rather have over immortality because immortality sucks. But it's like, because this way I'll be able to protect everyone that I care about. And then I'll I'll just die like a sword through the heart or something. If I never find a significant other to spend the rest of my life with, like the second option would I would totally go for that. But selling my soul to the devil, it's like I mean he's gonna take my soul anyways, right? <laughs> Regardless of what I choose. But yeah, if I if there is a chance for me to find a significant other, then yeah, I, would, I wouldn't sell my soul to the devil. If the devil you offered a deal of some other kind, would you accept it in exchange for eternal damnation? Nope. I see. Well, joke's on you, I have no soul, so haha, <laughs> this doesn't even apply to me. Civilization is about to come to an end as a plague sweeps the globe. Oh, how topical. Turning everyone who perishes into mindless zombies who hunger for living flesh. Still topical. You watch as everyone you know becomes gravely ill and turns, except for five of your closest friends and family. How does this make you feel? <laughs> Excited! I've always fantasized about a zombie apocalypse. Indifferent, this is life now, man. I'm just so... I'm just so dead. I mean, I am, would be like... Well, I've been mentally preparing myself for this day, so... Yeah. If you knew that a zombie apocalypse was coming in 10 years from now and you could prevent it from happening, would you? I feel like I would at least make an attempt to stop it from happening. But I feel like people wouldn't believe me, so then all my efforts would be in vain anyways. I mean, I would try, yeah. Interesting. You've been working at a company for 10 years, ho ho, and you've been promised a very important, incredibly lucrative promotion. <laughs> That's funny. That's hilarious. However, someone hired only a number of weeks ago has just been promoted to the position that you were promised. Your boss essentially tells you tough luck and that maybe one day you'll get the position and that he had to promote the other employee as a favor from a friend. How does this make you feel? I mean, I'd be a little miffed that I was promised a promotion, but I mean, again, you can't promise someone a promotion because that's still favoritism and 
some regard. Like, when it comes to working at a job, nothing's guaranteed. So I'd, yeah, I'd be kind of like, okay, that is how it is. You also learned a few secrets about the company that could be disastrous if they were to escape, such as the fact that they haven't been properly reporting their income for the last decade. Oh, wow, that seems pretty topical for a certain company that starts with the letter D. What would you wish to do in this situation? I mean, cooking the books is really... That's on the executives. That doesn't really affect me. I mean, as long as I'm still getting a paycheck, that's like, whatever. If you guys want to screw yourself over, you guys screw yourself over. As long as you haven't screwed me over. I mean, yeah, the company could fall apart. I mean, I'd rather they fall apart on... Uh, like, they're the ones responsible for falling apart making things fall apart, not me. Like, I'll just watch it. I'll just watch everything burn. So, nothing. You win some, you lose some. If the, role vote, if the roles were reversed and you were hired and promoted as a favor over someone more deserving, would you accept the position? No. Because I... I wouldn't be qualified. Really. Why would you put me in a position that I'm not qualified for? That's just like a risky investment. You're home alone at night, cooking food in your kitchen, and you turn around to realize that someone is watching you through your window in the darkness. Wow, creepers. You have their face and hands pressed up against the window, and they make direct eye contact with you before turning and running out of sight around the other side of the house. How does this make you feel? Secure, I'm ready to handle whatever is coming. I mean, if they can bleed, I can stab them. Wait, protective, I need my... F Wait, aren't I alone? It said I was alone in the kitchen, right? So... I mean, secure would also be protective too, because if you're ready to handle whatever's coming, then you'd also be ready to make sure your family is okay. So... Yeah. Now what do you think you'd do in this situation? Run out of the house, go to the neighbors. Yeah, it's a surefire way of getting my face chopped off. Uh, check to see if everyone in the house was safe, of course. The face you saw in the window was the face of a supernatural entity and not of a human being. Would your answers change at all? Well, yeah, then I would definitely go to being protective instead of secured, because I definitely wouldn't know what to expect in that situation. So, yeah. I'm going to present you with some more potential scenarios, but I'm going to ask for more simplistic answers as a result. Here we go. You're not feeling all too well, so you decide to go to the doctor. The doctor runs a series of tests and gets back to you shortly after to announce some grave news. It turns out that you've contracted an incredibly rare illness that there is currently no cure for. This illness causes complete body paralysis within six months of contraction, meaning that in less than half a year from now, you'll be rendered unable to move, blink, talk, or any form of expression whatsoever. So I've got that disease that like freezes my bones. Like it's like, like when your body to this is too much calcium, so your joints and everything um, slowly become calcified. Yeah, that's a that kind of sucks. <laughs> you need to be kept alive on a feeding tube, and you'll never be able to communicate with anyone else ever again, just being kept alive on machines in a vegetative state. Would you want to be kept alive in that state, or would you rather have the plug pulled when it happens? Yeah, let me die. I'm not even living at that point. I'm just being kept alive. I mean, if I have the option to become a cyborg, I definitely go for it then. How would you like to spend the last six months of your life while still mobile? I guess I would spend it with friends and family. I don't know, I feel like that would be a burden on them. And then pursuing my dreams, it's like, that would make me more depressed because it's like, I'm pursuing these dreams, but I know I only have six months to pursue it, so I'm never going to finish it, and that would get me kind of sad. Making the world a better place while I can? Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of people who have, like, rare diseases, but they are... They do what they can to, like, tell the world what they have and hopefully help future generations from suffering from that disease and maybe help lead to a scientific breakthrough so future generations won't even have to worry about the disease as rare as it is. There's diseases out there that can put you in that sort of unfortunate situation, like I said. Does knowing this motivate you to do things you've never done before and pursue more from life, or do you feel relatively unaffected by the knowledge that this could potentially happen to you at any point in time? 
I'm still striving for a better future, regardless of whether I can move or not, or have some sort of rare disease. So it doesn't really change anything for me. Because I'm st I'd still be motivated. <laughs> you have a pet dog whom you've, ins whom you've raised since his birth. Three years have passed and it's the best dog you've ever had. You love it like it's your own child and one day he runs away in the middle of the night chasing after a wild animal in the darkness. You search everywhere for your dog but no matter what you do you can't seem to make any progress. About a month passes and you still haven't seen any trace of your four-legged friend until one morning... Until one morning, you awaken to the sound of a familiar barking. You rush outside to find that your elderly neighbor in his late 80s is out on his front lawn, joyously playing with your dog. He has named the beast Johnny, and him and your dog seem to be having the time of their lives. You rush over there and hug your dog, and he exa excitedly licks your face. Your neighbor says, Johnny's a good boy, isn't he? I lost him when I was just a boy about your age, but he's come back. Johnny has come back, and we're together again. Come to find out your elderly neighbor is suffering from dementia, recently brought on by the stress and heartache of losing his wife just a couple months prior to finding your dog. This dementia has caused him to believe your, that your dog, Johnny, is his old dog from his childhood coming back to his, into his life to make him happy and keep him company. The dog seems to be in great shape, very happy and well looked after, and you know that telling the old man that it isn't really his dog and it's your dog would break his heart and crush him. Would you break the news to him that it isn't his dog and take Johnny home with you, or would you let him keep the dog and choose to visit him daily to play and go for walks? I mean, if he's well taken care of and he's not, like, overfeeding him, then yeah, it's tough. I'm out. I'll let him keep my dog. Because then I know he's in good hands, and if the old man ends up passing, like, the dog's gonna have a guaranteed home back with me. But yeah. I'll let him keep him for that last few years of, of like, mental security, yeah? Does the story make you sad at all? I mean, I'm sad that I'm gonna lose my dog, but I, at least I know where he is. So I'm like, that's not too sad. But yeah, in general it does make me somewhat sad. Can you imagine yourself in the old man's position, being so alone in life, and finding one thing that makes you feel less alone, and potentially have to face it being ripped away from you once again? Yeah, I can empathize with that. Next question. Let's say that you were viciously murdered by a serial killer, and you fell for one of their traps as he lured you in and made you their latest victim. Now let's also say that you're given a unique opportunity in the afterlife as you return as a spirit to roam the earth. However, you're bound to two potential options, and only two. You can either choose to haunt your assailant and make his life miserable, hopefully foiling his plans to kill in the future and potentially save lives in the process, or you can choose to spend your time as a spirit amongst your still living friends and family and friends, guiding them in positive ways and making their lives better. Nope. Oh, here we go, it's frozen. Dang it, and it was going so well. Ah, uh, man. And this was a very... Jeez, I don't even remember the whole picture segment. Oh my gosh. Dang it. Why is it freezing? Is it because I'm recording? Because the second game, I recorded it just fine. So I don't know why this one froze up on me. I mean, last time, when, I, when it, the first test froze on me, like, I waited to see if it would resolve itself, but I waited for like 10, 20 minutes and it's, it didn't resolve itself. So, I don't know. I don't know if waiting it out for this one is gonna work. Okay, I'm back here. I don't even know if I picked the same answers as I did before. I can't remember. And I don't want to go back and look at my footage to like make sure I picked the same answers. That's going to take too long and I don't have a lot of time to record for this video. So I'm just going to move forward and hope that I still made the same um, answers. So here we are. I choosing between Haunting my assailant, or haunting my friends and family as a guardian angel, or being like the devil haunting the serial killer. 
You are bound to whichever option you choose until either your family and friends are no longer living or your killer is no longer living. You cannot choose both. Which one would you choose? Well, I mean, I'll just be angry for the rest of my afterlife if I just choose to haunt my killer. So I'd rather be my friends and family guardian angel, making sure they're going on the right path or a healthy path. Whether that's right or wrong, is that's up to society. But yeah. Do you think you have what it takes inside to drive your killer insane and push him over the edge? Oh yes, I definitely do. But I care about my friends and family more. Do you believe that this scenario is possible? I believe ghosts are like... They're not the souls of those that pass, but they're like energy that someone who passed with really strong emotions left behind and their emotion is what's keeping this massive energy together and I I feel like I believe that's what makes a ghost a ghost so yes yeah, scientifically I do believe it could be possible if the situation happened to a friend or family member and they were viciously killed which situation would you rather them choose I'd rather they stay with friends and family because why would they want to spend the rest of their afterlife with the killer because then you're you're with that killer instead of you know it's like okay I died through un fortunate circumstances, but I was like, I'd, I'd rather be someone's guardian angel than be someone's devil. That's the way I see it. One night you go to sleep and get a good rest that feels like the best sleep you've ever had. You wake up in an unfamiliar room, in an unfamiliar bed. You look in the mirror and you hardly recognize yourself. You look as though you've aged 20 years. Oh, so it's, uh, it's that story, isn't it? Where a guy went to sleep and then he woke up and he, like, 50 years had passed and all his friends are old and his family has forgotten him. There's a sticky note on the television screen that says press play. So you oblige the note and hit the play button to reveal a message that has been left for you by all your friends and family that are still alive and well, though they all seem to be 20 years older as well. They explain to you that every single day for the last 20 years you've repeated this same day over and over again. Due to a severe head injury, your memory doesn't last more than 24 hours, so each day when you sleep, all recollection of what took place 24 hours prior is wiped entirely. Oh, so it's 50 first dates! Awesome. Your loved ones have made a video for you to let you have a say in your potential future. You have the option of either watching this video every single day so you know what's going on and can continue to progress your life, even though you won't have any recollection of it, or you can choose to continue living as if you had been repeating the same day over and over again, living in ignorant bliss. Which would you choose to do? Okay, when I watched the movie Fifty First Dates, I don't know, I feel like that's so... That's such a tragic way to live. Because like Adam Sandler, like his character would just have to make videos or eventually DVDs of his wife's life and like through like her and him having kids and like that's like the only way for her to have any memories is for him to take the place of that part of her brain that creates long lasting memories and I feel like that's such a burden on him like what because I think both the characters are like what in their 20s or 30s so imagine if like Adam Sandler's character he, like he has to do that for the next like 50 years just recording new memories for her on like videotapes and then DVDs and then I guess eventually Blu-rays I feel that's not in that scenario I don't feel it's fair to him it's not fair to their kids that their mom will never remember who they are unless like you play this recording for her and she's gonna that's like a lot of stuff that she has to wake up and watch because like eventually like she'll like yeah the first few years like she only has to watch like 30 minute videotapes but then it's just gonna get longer and longer and longer and then she's gonna spend most of her days catching up on memories that she can't keep and that's she's still gonna miss out on that on newer memories and it's just I don't know doing that for 50 years until like she passes? I feel like that's kind of tragic way to go. But then living happily but unknowing, it's like, okay, you live your life, I guess you would just never move past that. So it's like, 
if you're living the same day over and over, that's not great either. Because you're eventually going to get older and you're going to look in the mirror and be like, why am I old? I should still be like, what, 20, 30 something years old. Why am I old? I don't know, either one of those... I mean, you can't live happily unknowing because eventually you are going to realize that. And both of those are very tragic scenarios. I don't know. I mean, I feel like watching the video every day is its very impractical for like the next 50 years. Like that's just, I feel like that's not going to work. I guess living happily because then it's like... If you don't know what you're missing out on, you won't be miserable about it. Would you be upset if your family kept the truth for you for 20 years even though they felt like it was for your own good? I mean, if I'm not going to even remember it, it doesn't even matter, right? So, no. If your best friend was in this situation, would you make a video for them telling them the truth? Or would you repeat every day exactly the same for them in order to keep them happy, never letting them know the truth? Yeah, let them live in ignorant bliss because, like, that's such a burden on everyone around you. And it's like, it sucks for everyone involved. There's, like, no way to resolve that unless you could turn them into a cyborg and then you're just like, okay, just put in a new memory bank. You've come to find through frantic digging in the attic and the reading of old files and newspapers that your parents are famed psychologists. You've also come to find that they aren't really your parents. In fact, they're not even related to you at all. From what you can gather through your new discoveries, a story tells of a young child who developed a psychotic tendencies and went into a trance before murdering their parents in a tragically brutal way. However, that child suffered so much trauma from the event of the loss of their parents, once the trance had worn off, that they repressed the memory of the parents' death, blocking it completely from their mind. Two psychologists took the child into treatment and performed studies against the child's knowledge, raising that child to be a fully functional adult while playing the role of the child's real parents to further gather data and potentially help that child avoid a terrible life in the process. You are that child. Would you resent your parents? I mean, if it was traumatic and they're studying me in order to like find a better way to help other children cope with their trauma too. No, I wouldn't resent that. I mean, I'd, I'd be shocked for sure, but it's like... Would you be grateful that they gave you a second chance at life? Um, yeah. A fully functional adult? It's like... Why not? Would you feel betrayed by your parents? I mean, I think anyone in that scenario would feel betrayed, but then once you understand why, it's like... Well, thanks. Would you confront your parents about the articles you found? I mean, yeah, because I want to understand why. If you were in your parents' position, would you do the same for a child in a similar situation? I mean, it's either that or just put them down, because no one wants to live life always remembering that you murdered your own parents while you were in an uncontrollable trance. So yeah, interesting. I have one final scenario for you before we move on. The end of the world has come and gone and all that's left are post-apocalyptic soldiers roaming the lands, combing through towns and laying waste to any survivors in their paths in hopes of claiming their equipment for themselves in order to survive this harsh, barren wasteland known as planet Earth. So Mad Max? You get in good with a large colony of soldiers and spend about six months with them before they decide that you're not willing to you're not pulling your weight, and in order to save the very few feud rations they have left, they exile you from the compound and send you out to fend for yourself. You decide to venture into a neighboring town in hopes of finding food that was left behind by raiders, and it only takes you about a day and a half before you strike gold, a hidden underground bunker stockpiled to the brim with enough food to feed an entire colony for a year. Now you have a few choices to make. Would you go back to the colony and tell them about the bunker, or would you stay in the bunker all by yourself? I mean, I would take the bunker for for myself, if the colony is going to screw me over by throwing me out to the wolves, like, why should I help them out? If you could choose to only tell some of the soldiers about the bunker and let them in so you could lead a new colony, but exile the soldiers that exiled you, would you do it? Well, yeah, definitely. If they weren't... If some of the members of the colony didn't agree with my exile, then yeah, I'm totally going to help them out. 
If you were to lead a new colony, would you build it based on savagery and raiding, or would you build it based on sharing and compassion? I mean, savagery and raiding, that's, that's what screwed me over. So I guess, yeah, sharing. I mean, we're all trying to survive together. That's, that's how humans have always been. We've been a very tribal race of people. Or race of earthlings, I would say. If you were the leader of the colony that exiled you, except it was you who exiled someone else who wasn't pulling their weight, and that person just so happened to find themselves in a similar situation where they found a jackpot worth of food in an underground bunker but they refused to share with you and the colony, would you raid them and steal it for yourselves or would you let them keep what they found? I mean, they can keep what they found. We deserve it. Very interesting. Well, that wraps up this portion of the test. Please don't freeze on me again. But I need more from you before I allow you to rest. Oh, jeez. A choice here, a choice there. Which would you rather? Moral dilemmas abound from what I can gather. And you will answer clearly, crisp and concise. Would you be, will you be selfish, or is your conscience a vice? In just mere moments from now, we both shall see the difference between who you are and who you wish to be. Let us begin. Would you rather abandon the person you love most or be abandoned by the person you love the most? I'd rather be abandoned. I mean, if I love someone, I wouldn't abandon them. But if they abandon me, it's like, okay, that's just how it goes. Would you rather have friends in high places who could get you anything you wanted but didn't necessarily care about you, or friends who couldn't give you anything but feel a deep personal bond with you? Well, yeah, I value the bond more than the wealth. Would you rather find $10,000 and get to keep it for yourself, or find $20,000 but have to split it four ways with your closest friends and family? I mean, I split it four ways, I'm still going to have 5000 to myself, so yeah, sure. Would you rather cheat on your partner but never get caught, or know that your partner cheated on you but have no way of proving it? I mean, I personally would never cheat on my partner. Yeah, I'd rather get cheated on. <laughs> I don't know, that's a weird scenario. Would you rather get rich through illegal means or be poor but live an honest life? I'm already living the poor, honest life. <laughs> would you rather press a button that would kill your favorite pet, or press a button that would kill your favorite family member? Wow. So saying, do I value an animal more than a human? I mean, if I kill my favorite family member, my pet's not going to give a crap. Whereas if I killed my pet, my favorite family member is going to feel so guilty. And then if I kill my favorite family member, everyone else is gonna... My rest of my family is gonna be on my ass, so... I guess I'll just kill my pet. Ah, oh, jeez. Would you rather get fired from a high-paying job, or have to fire your friends from a high-paying job? Oof. Get me fired! I don't want to deal with that decision. <laughs> Would you rather sleep with your step-sibling, or sleep with your best friend's partner? Dude, what the frick? Well, I'm not going to stab my best friend in the back, so I guess the step-sibling is weird. Would you rather save your best friend from certain death and let a thousand strangers die, or save a thousand strangers and let your best friend die? I think my best friend's going to be really guilty that I killed so many people for her. I mean, if I'm in a scenario where I'm, like, grabbing my friend from falling off a cliff and everyone else is falling off, then... Yeah, I'll say my friend. Kind of sucks, but I mean, survival of the fittest, right? Would you rather get free food for the rest of your life or rescue a starving child from a third world country? I mean, it doesn't necessarily say free quality food. It's just, I could be eating like gruel for the rest of my life. So it's like, am I choosing my, to feed myself or feed a child? Who might grow up to kill me? I know, I'm very cynical, aren't I? I mean, I can feed myself, so I, I guess rescue the starving child. Would you rather be rich but without family, or poor but with family? I can handle living by myself. Because right now I'm kind of living the poor but with family life, and that's kind of miserable, because... 
family's all about the money. <laughs> Would you rather have to steal food for the rest of your life in order to eat, or steal enormous amounts of money from the wealthy but have to destroy the money immediately after? Yeah, sure, I'll be Joker. Would you rather serve four years in the military during wartime or move to a third world country and never be allowed to return home? So do I want to be a soldier or an exile? I mean, my f if I'm fighting for a dickwad, that's not really worth fighting for. So yeah, exile me. Would you rather always be traveling 10 miles above the speed limit or 10 miles per hour below the speed limit? Like always, that I can't break or anything? I guess above, so then I can know to- or below, then I would know- I would see obstacles coming better than above the speed limit. Would you rather never have sex for the remainder of your life or have to have sex every day in order to stay alive? Whoa! Yeah, sure, never have sex again. No one needs my DNA. Would you ever rather be addicted to hardcore drugs for 10 years but make a full recovery or addicted to alcohol for the rest of your life? Yeah, full recovery. I mean, I'm not a big fan of alcohol and anyways. Would you rather live to be 200 years old and perfectly preserved youthful body and have to watch your friends and family die around you or live to be 70 but die before your friends and family? Yeah, I can go 70. I don't need to be alive that long. So many things would change and I would just be more grumpy. Would you rather sacrifice all your friends in order to survive or sacrifice both of your parents? I mean, my parents are gonna pass on before me anyways. Whereas my friends are like within my age range, so they're gonna live alongside me. I'd go with my parents. <laughs> they had their chance at life, right? Would you rather get acknowledged for work that you didn't do or work hard for the rest of your life but not receive any praise for it? I mean, I'm already living this life. Work hard, never get praised. <laughs> Would you rather punch a nun or get punched by a nun? What the f- What is with this nun punching with the three, guy the three of these people? I guess I'll get punched by a nun. I don't imagine it'd be that painful. Would you rather lose all the money you've earned this year or lose all the memories you've gained this year? I mean, we're only three months into this year, so I wouldn't lose- that much memories? <laughs> Would you rather flip a coin for a chance to win 20 or immediately win 10? I'll go with a guaranteed 10. Because then I, if I flip a coin, I could win nothing. So I'd rather have something than nothing. Would you rather know how you die or know when you'll die? I'd rather know how I'll die. So then I can avoid it? <laughs> Would you rather be blind but able to see crystal clear underwater or be deaf always? I'd go with blind except for underwater because then all I have to do is wear a fish bowl and be like Spongebob. Yeah? <laughs> then it's like it solves the blind problem, just give me a fish bowl. <laughs> Would you rather give up all the internet and social media but be able to travel the world for free or have the best internet in the world for free, but never leave your house. Oh, this is like the stupidest question to give to an introvert. <laughs> yeah, basically this is like, the first option is extrovert or introvert. So yeah, introvert. <laughs> Would you rather walk barefoot across a bed of hot coals or walk barefoot through a pitch black snake infested corridor? I mean, if they're non-venomous snakes, then sure. I mean, most of them are kind of passive anyways. As long as I walk carefully and not step on any of them, like the worst they'll do is like nip at me. But most of them would just like, they'll sense me coming and they'll just like get out of the way. So yeah, I'll do the snakes. Would you rather be the judge who sentences people to death or the executioner in charge of killing them? I'll be the executioner. I'm just doing my job. I'm not the one who sentenced you to death. 
So I'm just like, just lay the head here and I'll get the chopping axe. <laughs> Would you rather have a witch cast a nasty hex on you so you'll always have bad luck? Or be haunted by a demon intent on possessing you? I mean, the demon could be like Ryuk from Death Note. Not a bad deal. I got a, a little buddy who's always trying to possess me. But then he's going to see the kind of life I lead and it's like, no, maybe I don't want to possess you. So sure, I'll go with the demon. Would you rather be married to someone incredibly beautiful who doesn't find you attractive? Or be married to someone whom you're not even remotely attracted to, but they still find you incredibly attractive? I mean, so is it, are you shallow or do you... Would you marry someone who at least finds you attractive? Even if you don't find them attractive. Yeah, I can marry someone I'm not attracted to. Divorce is always an option. Would you rather work a high paying job that you despise or a low paying job that you love doing? I mean, if, I, if I'm if i working a high paying job that I hate doing that will allow me to do hobbies that I love, then that's worth the suffering. Because like, it doesn't say that I'm working the high paying job like for like 60 or 100 hours a week, it's just saying it's a high paying job. So yeah, I can deal with something that I hate doing as long as I have the cash to do what I actually like to do. Would you rather walk one mile home wearing nothing but a pair of socks or be fully clothed but have to walk 100 miles to get home? I'll do the 100 miles. I've got Pikmin and Pokemon Go to play with. Get my steps in. Would you rather find $5 in your pocket or have to grab $100 out of a public toilet? If the public toilet is clean, I mean, most of what I've seen they are. And the water is always getting flushed, so... Like the $5 in my pocket is like... Oh, I forgot I left it here. Yeah, I'll do the pocket. I mean... I'll do the public toilet if it's like... Oh, great. Oh, it froze on me again. If this is like almost the end of the game, I'm gonna be very upset. Okay, here we go again. Uh, I, I still don't know if I picked this exact same answers, especially with that picture portion. But everything else, like I think I've pretty much picked the same answers as I did before, but oh my gosh, please do not freeze again. This has been the longest game so far, and I do not want to repeat that. Alright, so next question. Would you rather have a hundred of your favorite books but never watch a movie again, or have a hundred of your favorite movies but never read a book again? Okay, in this scenario, it's like, the only books that I really like is Lord of the Rings. So I, I'd i be happy keeping The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and never watched any of those movies again. But then there's been a lot of interesting movies that don't, that aren't based on a book like Pacific Rim, um, Godzilla, Zootopia. There are a lot of good books out there but then there's a lot of good movies out there too and I, I kind of like them both like original like the original source equally i guess i would go for books because with movies like they're always rebooting it whereas the books are always going to be consistent so yeah i'll give up movies for 100 books ah jeez louise why is this game freezing so much i just got to this point and it's freezing exactly this point again I don't have time to go through this game again. This has been really frustrating. Like, oh my gosh, why did the second game, like, I was able to record that just fine, but for some reason the first game and this third game, it's like freezing on me so much. Like, what is it about the second game that they programmed so well that I was able to record it without any issues, but the first and third game is just being... It's being so complicated. Yeah, I'm gonna have to stop recording here. And I don't know, I guess I'll pick it up another time, but this is just... Oh, this is frustrating. 
Jeez Louise. Like, I'd rather it just crash so that at least it closed the game for me. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just spending another day recording this. So, I guess see ya for now. Three days later. Okay, so far so good. Um, I'm guessing it is OBS or my webcam slowing down this game because so far the game has been working just fine. It hasn't, it hasn't frozen on me. So yeah, hopefully I'm towards the end so I can just finish recording this and just move on to the next game, which is the test chamber. So I think last time I wanted to give up movies for a hundred books. Because I can read through books faster. Would you rather always be 20 minutes late to everything or 2 hours early? I'd rather be 2 hours early. Yeah, I'll be bored, but I mean, at least I'm not missing out on anything. Would you rather find a dead body or witness to a deadly assault? I mean, either scenarios would have me looking at a dead body? But what if I'm a witness to a deadly assault and have the ability to stop it? Yeah, I like to actually like stop death from happening rather than finding the aftermath of death. So yeah. Would you rather be to change your past or see what the future holds for you? Well again, my past makes me who I am so I don't want to change that because I might end up being a worse dickhead than I am now. So, I'd rather look into the future, even though that may always also be depressing. Would you rather have one really great friend or a hundred mediocre friends? That's what Facebook is for. <laughs> I mean, again, this is like a quality versus quantity type deal, so I mean, yeah, quality for me. Would you rather you lose all of your teeth or lose one day of off your life every time you kiss someone? I can afford to lose a day off my life because I don't kiss people very much. <laughs> Would you rather win the lottery and lose the ticket before you can collect your money or see your worst enemy with the lottery? I don't think these events are mutually exclusive. Like, what if you win the lottery, I lose my ticket, and then my enemy takes my ticket? So this is not really a good either or scenario because they can... both these are pretty related. So yeah, I lose my ticket. <laughs> Would you rather find true love or have your dream job? Ooh. I mean, with true love, then you can endure anything. But with a dream job, that is a stable source of income. I mean, I don't mind dying alone, right? So, sure, I'll have my dream job. I mean, if I find the person that's my other half, then great. But if I don't find another half, then I'm not going to get depressed about it. Would you rather have a pause button for life or a rewind button? Pause is like, am I the Silver Surfer or Sonic or rewind where I am Tracer from Overwatch? I think a pause would be better because then I could possibly avert some disaster. But then rewind can do the same thing too. Or what if it's like you can have pause and rewind but you can't change the outcome? Then either of these won't even matter. Yeah, I'll go with the pause button. <laughs> Would you rather drown to death in gasoline or reboil to death in water? Ooh, gasoline doesn't smell so good. Now being boiled to death isn't much better either. I guess with drowning, you can pass out before your body shuts down, so I guess drowning would be the better option. Would you rather make a new friend every day or get a hundred dollars a day for doing nothing but never have friends again? I mean, I don't mind being alone. And then it's like making a new friend every day, so you'll have that hundred mediocre friends again. So... Yeah, I'm down to get a hundred every day. Would you rather die to save your family or sacrifice your family to save yourself? I mean, sure, I'll give my life to save my family. And they'll probably criticize me for it afterwards. 
Would you rather always be hated by those closest to you for something you didn't do, or have hurt everyone you care about but they'll never find out it was you? Well, I'm, all, I'm kind of already living this part, so sure, hate for something I didn't do. Would you rather sleep with your worst enemy or sleep with someone you know who has many incurable STDs? What if they're the same person? <laughs> I mean, sleeping as in sexy time or sleeping as in just sharing the same bed without making contact? <laughs> that would be too easy, wouldn't it? Sure, I'll deal with them, my worst enemy. Would you rather only eat food you don't like or give up all liquids except for water? I mean, I could possibly function on water just fine. It just won't be a very pleasant life. But then eating food I dislike, I feel that's probably the worst. So sure, I'll go on a water diet. Would you rather always listen to music at max volume or always listen to music just above the lowest volume? Oh my goodness. I mean, if you listen to music at a lower volume, that actually would help enhance your hearing. Whereas max volume, that's going to pretty much destroy your eardrums. So yeah, I'll go with the low volume one. Because then eventually, once I enhance my hearing, then it'll just, it'll eventually get to a volume that I can hear it. Uh, would you rather meet your hero and find out they don't like you or never meet your hero at all? Sure, I'll never meet my hero. I don't really care. I'm not that much of a fangirl. Would you rather never have a pet for the rest of your life or never have friends for the rest of your life? But my pet is my friend. I can talk to my pets. Sure, I'd rather have never have friends. <laughs> would you rather live in excruciating pain for the rest of your life or live pain-free but everyone you know and love will live in excruciating pain for the rest of their lives? So who's the one who has to suffer? You or your loved ones? Because <laughs> if your loved ones are in excruciating pain, then they're going to constantly resent you for being the one not in pain. So yeah, I can live with pain. I mean, after a while you become numb to it, right? Thank you for answering my questions, but we are not yet done. For we have made it through many categories, except for one. These final questions will be from deep within. I want to see your soul. I want to see your heart beat quick, and I want to learn all that you know. This seems very intrusive, but then again, all three of these games have been pretty intrusive. I want to see what makes you think. I want to know what makes you tick. I want to know your darkest truths. I want to know what makes you sick. Haven't I already told you that? <laughs> I want to expel the truth from yourself. I want to feed on your precious fate. I want to learn all of your love and bathe in all of your hate. So one last time we sit together as we await the final revelation. These are the last questions I have, the last examination. Take your time, do think hard, savor every moment dearly. For when I am finally finished with you, you will see it all ever so clearly. And here we go. Choose one of these words that you feel resonates with you most in this very moment. I guess I'm feeling kind of morbid. Just one of these words to feel resonates. Oh, so isn't inquisitive and curious kind of the same? Or I guess inquisitive is more active and then curious is more passive. I do become intrigued a lot. Do you ever lie to those who are closest to you? I mean, yeah, sometimes telling the truth doesn't work out. Have you ever hurt someone with whom you didn't whom you know didn't deserve it. Possibly. I have, have you ever lost your temper when you know you shouldn't have? Oh yeah. It's kind of something that runs in my family. Have you ever intentionally hurt an animal? No. Have you ever blamed someone for something that you know they didn't do? If I knew for a fact they didn't do it, then of course not. But if it's like, if I'm missing cru crucial pieces of information, then yeah. I would totally do the blame game. Have you ever abandoned a pet? No. Have you ever abandoned a loved one in their time of need? No. Have you ever stolen something from someone that you cared about? No. Have you ever broken something to spite someone that you cared about? No. That seems pretty petty. Have you ever played the victim in a situation even though you haven't been wronged? No. That's selfish. 
Have you ever had romantic feelings for someone who wasn't your partner while you were in a relationship? No. Have you ever wished for the death of someone who had wronged you? I feel like I have. I can't remember an instance of this happening. So I'm gonna go with my instincts. I probably have. Have you ever wished for the death of a loved one? No, if you love someone, then you wouldn't wish for their death. That'd be kind of silly. Then they wouldn't be a loved one, they'd be a hated one. If you knew that writing someone's name on a piece of paper could instantly cause their death, would you write down anyone's name? Ah, we're going death note here. If I had a death note. No, I feel that's, that's too much power for a mortal. Do you feel like you could spend more time with your loved ones than you currently do? I could, but there's a lot of obstacles like transportation, uh, time. I'm, I have a full-time job, so I, my time is super limited. Have you ever owed someone an apology but refused to apologize to them? No? If I, if I need to apologize to someone, I just outright say it. I don't wait. You ever regret worrying too much about things you can't control? No. I mean, if I can't control it, it's... Shouldn't I? Sh I feel like I shouldn't be blamed for it, because it's not like it's something something that happened that came from my choices. You know, you ever feel like your negativity brings other people down? Yeah, can't be helped. It's like when you're negative, you spread that energy to other people, and it just it's like a domino effect. Do you ever regret not standing up for yourself when you feel you've been wronged? <sighs> yes. A lot of my friends and family say you you should have said this and that instead of just like letting things happen and it's like, well, I didn't feel confident enough. Do you ever feel like you let others influence your decision making too much? No. Like sometimes they influence it a little bit, but I don't like rely on them f to make my decisions. Like I come to my own conclusions most of these times. Do you ever wish that you lived a more honest life? I mean, everyone wished they lived an honest life, but sometimes honesty is not the best policy. So, yeah. Has your dishonesty ever caused someone else to suffer? Not to my knowledge. Have you ever had someone leave your life before you had the chance to tell them something important? Well, I mean, I've had family pass on before I was even born. Does that count? Just leave your life, so it has to be while I'm alive, right? Yeah, there's been an instance of that. Do you ever feel like you prioritize people in your life that are unworthy of your time? I mean, I feel like my friends are all worth my time, if I have any, to spend on them. Do you ever feel like you prioritize your own wants before those who need you the most? This is tough, because I understand my limitations. I can only do so much with what I have. So sometimes, yes, I do tend to prioritize my own wants because it's like, if something's like super out of the way that I have to put in more effort to help someone who needs me, then I feel like that could also hurt more than help. Because if you recognize that, like someone with mental mental issues, like if you if you're not a trained therapist, like don't go out of your way to try to help someone because if you're not familiar with their mental issues then you're just gonna make the situation worse it's not so much my wants but i recognize my limitations so yeah do you ever feel like you spend too much time working towards something that you're not truly passionate and truly passionate about but, uh no i mean my projects are all passion projects it's just trying to split up my time between all of them do you feel like you're living up to your full potential no I mean, a lot of stuff does get in the way, and I could, like, work through it, but it's like, I just don't have enough energy in a day. Do you ever let your fears stop you from pursuing things that you truly want? Yes and no, but I guess more yes than no. Have you ever refused to try something because you were afraid that you would fail? Nope. If I feel like I can do something, I'll attempt it. Have you ever been attracted to someone but refused to let them know because you were afraid of being rejected? Yes. Um, I mean, I have confessed to my crushes, and I did get rejected, but, I mean, I feel like, I feel better getting that off my chest rather than holding on to that feeling of uncertainty. 
Do you ever feel as if though you're chasing the wrong things in life? Parents seem to think I'm chasing the wrong things, but I personally don't. Do you ever feel like you spend so much time planning for the future that you ignore the present? No. I keep things balanced. Do you feel like your friends and family like you more than you like them? Nope. Have you ever loved a pet more than your family? Yes, absolutely. Do you ever make up excuses to get out of going to an event instead of just telling the person who invited you that you just don't want to go? Nope. If I don't want to go somewhere, I just tell them out straight up. I'm not going to friggin' make up a story just to avoid social gatherings. Do you ever feel like you spend more time with technology than you do building stronger bonds with your friends and family? Currently, yes, because again, time, transportation, I'm just unable to like visit the people I want to visit because their work schedule is out of alignment and they're or they're too far away for me to travel to practically. So, yeah, I feel that. Have you ever felt have you ever defended someone that you shouldn't have? I have, and I feel a little betrayed, but now it's like I understand why they felt the way they did. I still feel kind of betrayed. So, yeah. Do you sometimes have a hard time admitting when you're wrong? No. I make mistakes. I'm only human. Do you ever place the blame for your personal failures on something, someone or something else? Nope. My failures are my own. Have you ever accused someone of something with no real evidence to back it up? I can't think of any instance of this happening. So, no. Have you ever had sex with someone whom you know you shouldn't have? Nope. Have you ever had any kind of relationship with someone whom you know you shouldn't have? Mm, no. Have you ever let a relationship degrade because you're afraid of being the one to break up with someone? Nope. If something's not working out, then it's better to break it early on rather than let it go on for years and years and then you both people regret being in the relationship. Or someone cheats. That's not a good way to go. Do you ever feel like you could take better care of your own health? No, because I think I take pretty decent care of myself. Have you ever let someone else take the blame for something that you did? As a kid? Yeah. Hasn't any- hasn't every kid been through that? Or like, if you have siblings, you broke a window and you blame it on your siblings? I mean, that's just kind of prior to the process of growing up. So, yeah. Have you ever acquired something that you didn't really want just because someone else wanted it? No. Anytime I want something, like, I actually want something. Like, my cousin had Transformer figures, and I always wanted one, but I never really got one. So, no. I want it because I want it. <laughs> Do you ever feel like you're not living up to others' expectations? Oh yes, I'm constantly reminded of that. Have you ever walked out of someone's life without any explanation? No, but I had people walk out of my life with no explanation. Do you ever feel like you focus more on the negative aspects of your life and what you don't have rather than being grateful for what you do have? Nope. Have you ever witnessed someone being wrong but didn't have the courage to stand up for them? Honestly, I don't because growing up, I was the one being bullied and no one really stood up for me. So, nope, can't say I have. And finally, do you feel like you're a good person? I feel like I'm a good friend, but as a good person, no, I don't. Very interesting. That concludes the ending to your examination. In your mind, I have dug myself a hole. I will analyze your answers very carefully, and now it's time for me to gaze into your soul. This is preposterous. This simply cannot be. I have expected every potential outcome. But yours seems to have evaded even me. Am I confusing? I was prepared to tell you of your fate, to play upon your fear, to break the worst of news to you, to plant seeds of doubt within your ear. But as I've asked you to be honest with me, I must in turn be just as honest as with you. For as much as I wish, I wish to lie, I am forever shackled to the truth. From what I can deduct from deep within, from everything you've shared with me, in return, I shall share this with you. This is what I see. Let's dive right in here, shall we? Point blank, I'm going to give it to you straight, blunt and honest. You're insecure. Even when you're filled with confidence, bordering on arrogance, it's not entirely real and it never lasts long. Wow. 
you are flooded with deeply ingrained insecurities. However, the good news is they are all complete and utter bullshit. You don't need to be insecure because the truth is you're absolutely amazing. Your biggest issue is that you spend so much time thinking about your faults or covering up your deep insecurities by putting on a persona and you don't spend enough time just letting yourself feel free. Do you know how amazing it is to open yourself up to someone and have them look at you and see just how incredibly beautiful you are inside and out? Hmm, fate says something similar to me. The only way you're ever going to experience this or experience more of this is to actually take the chance that some people aren't going to like you for you, but those people don't matter because it's their loss that they don't. You need to spend more of your time focusing on all the incredible things that you can do that others can't and realize there's a place in this world for you that others would, be, would kill to be able to experience. If you can master the ability to see your true self enough to allow others to see it too, then you'll be on an incredible path to self-discovery and making the world an overall happier place. I think you'll be very surprised just how much of a positive impact this can have on your life going forward. I hope this information helps you achieve your goals. Your secret word is discovery. Remember this word. This will come in handy. Interesting. So, so far, so now for this, uh, If you've received an ending that you've already received before from previous examinations, remember, we did not ask you your secret words prior to taking this test, so that should be very telling. It means something very special. If your result was the same as something you've got previously, we'd like you to add the phrase twin words next to your secret word in the comments. If you received an entirely new outcome, or then that means you've got multiple layers of things to work on in your journey, or you may just have an extra layer of depth to your personality, but only you would know the answer to that. You've answered hundreds of questions, you've found deeper meanings, you've been enlightened, and you've helped others find enlightenment. Many people have wondered just what the test series is truly about, but it's simple. The answers are always so much more simple than we believe them to be. The test is about you. The reflection in your darkened screen, the one who seeks the answers, the person who seeks answers, more than just more than being about the answers, the test is so is more so about the questions. It's about making you think. It's about encouraging you to open up and admit that you're human. Just as human as everyone else. The test is about unity. The test is about compassion. The test is about bringing people together and showing the world that we're not so different after all. Look at all the secret words that have been left in the comments. Look at all the thousands of people who are just like you. We all feel so lonely sometimes. We all feel flawed. We all feel pain. But that's because every single one of us is human. The world judges one another based on so many variables, but they're the most hypocritical set of variables imaginable. Ain't that the truth? We judge each other and are judged ourselves by our peers who do the same exact shit that they judge us for in the end, and that we judge them for too. You feel flawed because you are flawed. You feel afraid because you have the right to be. You feel overwhelmed because the world is overwhelming. Depression is overwhelming and anxiety is overwhelming. Our problems are overwhelming. Suicide is an epidemic. We are losing loved ones before their time and any one of us can fall on the hardest times in our lives at any given moment. We can lose everything we know and love instantly and unexpectedly. But one thing that we are not is alone. You are never alone. We're all flawed because we're all human. We're all scared because we're all human. We all fight these battles every single day because we're all human. But you never have to feel alone in your fight. Look at all the secret words that have been gathered that match yours. Look at all the words that don't match yours. Perhaps those people are going through struggles that you have yet to experience or know nothing about. And perhaps some others know not of yours either. But don't judge those who are struggling. Help them, just as you wish to be helped in your time of need. Don't be afraid to ask for help and reach out to those who are. Everyone is suffering. Some of us just suffer quieter than others. We are all in this together. The test series has helped bring so many people together and makes so many people feel less alone. We've read your comments, and others are free to do so as well. We've read about how these games have helped you. We've read about how much positivity they've spread. 
We've read how many we've read how many people say their lives are forever changed, and I'll tell you one thing. If even one life was saved in the process of the social experiment, then it was worth conducting. And every single one of you that left a comment is a hero. By leaving comments, you helped spread the message out to others. You helped spread a positive light in a very dark time for so many people, and those people have you to thank for it. There are so many people in this world that do nothing for other, who do nothing for others, and they'll continue to do nothing for others. They won't lift a finger to help others around them because they don't understand that someone is suffering just as much as they are. They're just too afraid to open up about it. But not us. We've all opened up quite a lot, haven't we? We were brave enough to answer these questions that so many people fear admitting to. We were brave enough to take a chance and leave a secret word as a symbol of our participation. And for that, Random Studios would like to thank you by not only placing your name in the credits at the end of this game so the world knows of your good deeds in spreading the word and in participating, but we've also got another surprise for you. Everyone who has left a comment on our titles and continue to do so on future titles will be put into the credits of our new massive project that we've been working on, but that's not the good part. We will also be going through and selecting names from those who leave comments on all of our titles and putting their names right into the actual game and storyline, whether it be a special item, a piece of the lore, or a character named after them, and much more. You've contributed your time and energy and helped others in need. We want to make sure you're commemorated for your efforts and get the admiration you deserve. Now, as far as your secret words go, your secret words will play a pivotal role in our new project. You will plug your secret words into different parts of your journey when they are requested of you and they will alter the game in a way uniquely set for your specific words. That's kind of cool. This is an RPG where every choice matters, where every decision you make changes something about your session. This is an RPG that focuses on every human emotion and the decisions we make and how those decisions make us feel. Keep an eye out in the future for our main project, Chasing Demons, where every NPC from all of our titles will be represented with a storyline and the world will get to see how they all tied again tie in together. You helped shape it, you helped make it what it is, and we will be sure to continue to add more and more players into the lore and gameplay as we read more and more of the comments left on our titles all the way up until its official release. And again, to commemorate those who participated across all of our titles, we will be periodically selecting names from all of our titles. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us and everything you continue to do for the world. We greatly appreciate your feedback and support. You've read every single review and comment left for us. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for everything you do, thank you for playing, and thank you for contributing your secret words to our projects. Well, that was lengthy. <laughs> so, my secret words across the entire trilogy are gifted, reveal, and discovery. So I wonder what this Chasing Demons game is gonna do for that. But yeah. I mean, I'm kind of disappointed that the three characters, Choice, Fate, and Destiny, like, didn't really have a story in this trilogy. Like, their story's not gonna be until, like, they release their other game, Chasing Demons. So now we still don't know, like, what their, their, their story is. I mean, we're getting, like, teases of it in this trilogy, but I'm kind of disappointed that they haven't quite revealed what they are, but I'm guessing they're saving that for that new game that they're working on. I mean, I guess my theory of this being like the three ghosts or th yeah, I guess the three ghosts like judging my soul as I go on to the the great beyond. I mean, it's that's I mean, that's the kind of scenario I'm seeing since they're all in the same room, but they're like taking the place of the previous NPC. I mean, this is a it's pretty like interesting experience. Although like some of the questions did kind of repeat throughout the games. Like, what was it? There was that like, um, do you feel you are worthy of something? Like, that's that's a question that I think got repeated throughout three games. So I don't know. I guess I guess there's only so many questions they can ask before in order to like come up with certain results from the programming so I guess it can't be too unique otherwise it's like their results it's not to say it's not accurate but it's like too wide like I think given the programming of the three games it's just like it feels complex enough that if they were to add 
distinctly different questions in every in each of the three games, it would I think it would probably make things explode. I mean, look, the first and the first game and the third game like froze on me uh, so many times. So it was like whatever they're coding into these games is pretty complex. But all in all, it was, like, it was an interesting series of ga games. As a side note to anyone and everyone who has taken the time to be here, we have also developed a game titled The Testing Chamber, which can be considered connected to the test trilogy in a very special way. So feel free to check that out, as we think it's quite a unique experience. I mean, you're just answering questions. It's not that unique. If you enjoyed what the test trilogy had to offer, then we truly believe that you'll love the playstyle of The Testing Chamber, as it takes everything that its predecessors offered and amplifies the experience to an unprecedented degree. We genuinely hope you give the testing chamber a chance as we've spent countless hours of passion development making it what it is and we hope after playing it that it means as much to you as it does to us. In the meantime, we'd like to recommend our title, The Advisor, to you. Yeah, self-advertising. We're gonna need them when you're chasing demons. Ooh. I will peel the truth from your flesh like a petals from a blackened rose. She loves me. Don't do this. She loves me not. She loves me. Please, I beg of you. She loves me not. God. She loves me. She loves me not. She will never love a monster like you. So let her choice take its toll, and in her cell may she rot. Thank you for being you. We really hope you get to punch a nun at some point in the near future. Yeah, this this. Uh, there were quite a few people complaining about the the shameless, shameless, shameless self promotion that the developers have been doing, like like this, like advertising their other games, and it's like, okay, I get it. You guys are trying to like push us to your other games. But they, this is like the first games, like the first series of games I've played where they... Are these actual game titles? What the fuck is wrong with you? What do you know? Okay. That's a little weird. But yeah, that's that's been like a common complaint among players. Like they, they appreciate, they appreciate the trilogy For what it is, but then this like shameless self plug for all their other games in this trilogy, it did get kind of tiring because they did it. I think they did it throughout all three games, and this was probably the lengthiest one because I think they listed like all their titles. So I was like, yeah, it was getting kind of annoying when I was like scrolling because like this is already a very lengthy series of games because it's all just like answering questions and stuff, and then the they bloat it more with the self-promotions of their other games and I thought like I feel like that ends up detracting from the experience because like they're trying to I get what they're trying to go for with this trilogy but to keep continuously plug all their other games into this it really does a disservice to them because now it's just like they're putting ads in our faces even though they're not having act they don't have actual ads in the games. But yeah, it's just a that's the only issue I have with it. Other than the whole like the game freezing on me and I have to start over from the very beginning. Like if it had an autosave feature, like that would help. Because you already have like this option for a new game. So why not have an autosave feature so if you're still answering questions and you got interrupted in some way, you can just continue where you left off instead of having to start over from the beginning because this this final game in the trilogy 
it took a really long time. Like the last part I recorded, like it took at least like an over an hour, an hour and a half. That took forever to replay the game to get to the point, and then it just froze again. If you're curious about who you are as a person, I highly recommend going through the trilogy. Just be aware that if you have internet disconnections or any other interruptions in your game, it's likely to freeze on you, so that may vary your experience a little. So I am certainly glad to finish this. I don't know if I'm going to play Test Chamber. I mean, it sounds interesting, but I kind of don't really feel like sitting through another game of self-promotion at the very end. Like, I just want to get through the credits and be done. So, until next time, this is Zero Raptor, signing off. Laters. <laughs>